Hello everyone and welcome to a one hour yoga flow that entails some primal movements otherwise known as animal flows as well as of course mixed martial arts techniques. I have made a Spotify playlist if you'd like some music in the background. If you're interested the link is below. Without further ado let's begin in a yoga squat. So sitting low, opening your hips up with your elbows, pressing your hands together and connecting to some deep breathing. We are going to begin by just rolling out our wrists. So beginning with our right one, going one direction and then the other direction, just loosening them up, preparing them for the lesson. Now swapping hands, rolling one way and of course the other way, all whilst getting the benefits of the squat position. Now today was a windy day, but thankfully the camera didn't fly off. Okay, so stretching your hands out in front of you, flipping them both directions, and really getting into your fingers as well as just your wrists here. Then shake it out, shake it all out, and we'll come to a ragdoll position, just folding forwards, holding opposite elbows, and swaying lightly side to side, maybe adding a bit of a bend in the knees to let the hamstrings warm up and loosen up the lower back. Begin to let go of any unnecessary tension that you might be holding in your jaw or neck, just letting everything go. And then slowly releasing the clasp of the elbows and rolling out vertebra by vertebra until your hands touch above you. And then we're going to bend by holding on to our right wrist to the left, getting a side stretch across the body. Coming back to central, swapping the grip and going over to the right hand side, trying to keep our back straight still. Then twist to the side trying to keep our hips facing forwards. On an inhale, bring your hands back up and then exhale and twist to the opposite direction. Inhale up to the center, then open your hands out and get a good bend back, looking up to the sky. Then bring the palms back to center lifting your left foot off the ground for a quadricep stretch using both hands so you get a bit of a stretch in the shoulders as well all whilst holding a balanced position warming our ankles up for our later practice release the foot and come to chair pose bring your hands back together in front of the sternum. Now twisting to the left hand side, crossing our right elbow over our knees. Make sure that one knee doesn't come in front of the other. Then coming back to center and twisting over to our right hand side. Once again, making sure neither knee shifts forward. Returning to chair pose and then bringing our hands all the way up the sky. We'll do our side stretches again. So first to the left, then swapping the grip and over to the right. Come back and then twisting to the left. Inhaling, hands come up, exhale, twisting to the right. Inhale, both hands go up to the sky, opening up, arching our back. Then bring your hands back together, lifting up now your right foot off the ground, using both hands to grab onto the foot, getting that shoulder opener once again. Find your drishti, your center point.
releasing the foot and come into chair pose making sure we're not sticking our bum out too far then aeroplane your arms and bring yourself onto the balls of your feet and then coming back to chair pose arms come up transferring your weight on and off of the balls of your feet engaging your core and targeting your calf muscles for the last one we're going to hold the aeroplane positioned arms just holding here then coming back to chair pose grabbing on to your hand in a basket clasp behind you and folding forwards trying to straighten our legs a bit more than we previously were in ragdoll and coming back to chair pose releasing the hands and getting the opposite side grip the unusual side once again folding forwards and remembering just to relax your neck if it isn't ready and relax anything that is unnecessarily tight so walking back to plank pose here we're just going to hold this for a little bit just to get into our core a little bit more holding the position nice and flat with your back making sure hips aren't sagging down then slowly come to the floor and we're going to do a moving sphinx so hands out to the side breathing in coming up the next heading coming back down so inhaling and exhaling up and down just four times and the last one hold position a bit longer being present in the stretch then exhale coming back forwards releasing your head to the ground and then push up into a child's pose just releasing our shoulders relaxing the lower back and hips now thread your right arm through to the left getting a bit of a shoulder stretch here as well as engaging into a twist then the opposite side so swapping the hand forward and the hand that's twisted through then detwisting out of this back to child's pose getting ready for our side stretches so bringing our hands over to the left getting a bit of a stretch into the right hand side of the body just go as far as feels comfortable letting gravity do some work into the stretch then walk both hands over to the right and one smaller detail is you can cross your left hand over the top of your right hand to deepen the stretch to the side remember to breathe whilst being in these poses then coming back to center child's pose and to all fours now just do a flowing figure eight position of your body so drawing a figure eight just warming up our spine and our whole body shoulders hips all at once in this flow then swapping direction going the other way just flowing as much as possible essentially painting circles with your body last couple this direction before coming back to central position and then flipping your hands so that the palms are on the ground if this is too sharp a pain then definitely back out and just do a lighter version when you're here you're just going to be circling your body gaining a deeper stretch into the wrists and then swapping direction of the circles once you've done this releasing the hands just shaking them out a little bit 
before placing them back onto the ground. Now palms facing towards your face and then transferring your weight left and right, gently being present of the feeling you're getting through your wrists. Shake this off, coming back to all fours, tucking your toes, lifting your knees off the ground and you're going to lift opposite hand to opposite arm. So if it's your right arm, your left leg comes off the ground and vice versa. Do this whilst trying to keep your body level to the ground as much as possible. And we'll do about eight of these before going to the full version where you flip over to your back by twisting your left leg through and under your body and your right arm catching you as you twist through and swapping this around. So just twisting through, very primal movement-esque. So engaging your core for the twists and also catching a different balance each time you twist through. Do this eight times as well. Being as controlled as you can with the movements, not going for speed, but more for control of the movement. And once you've done this, you will transition to your first downward dog, getting our upside down V position, moving about how it feels comfortable, maybe bending one leg, then the other leg, or maybe coming to the balls of our feet, whatever feels good for your body at this moment. Now we're gonna flow through to a plank position and then letting our hips lead us back through to a downward dog. So trying to be as relaxed as possible whilst doing this, as well as engaging our core as well. Last couple before we come. Then lifting our right leg off the ground for three-legged dog, opening our hips out to the side whilst bending our right leg looking through our left shoulder, then bringing our right foot between our hands into a warrior two position, facing our body to the side of our mat, breathing in, holding the pose, making sure our arms are parallel to the floor, then come facing to the side, lifting our arms up, and then into a squat position. So now we're going to do some side kicks. So lift off our right foot and bring our weight to our left foot. Kicking out for a side kick. Nice and slowly and controlled. Going both directions. One side to the other side. Just four times in total. Chambering our knee up to our chest whilst we do the side kicks. We can also look over our shoulder to see the target we are hitting with our side kick, trying to flex our foot so that the heel is going to be the connection to the target. Lifting up the arms, pushing our heels out to the side and folding forwards for our wide-legged forward fold. Sometimes you need to shorten the stance if it isn't a deep enough stretch for yourself. Inhale, flat back. Exhale fold forwards deeper and then walk our right arm into the center and twist out to the left hand side remembering to breathe whilst we're in this twisted pose and swap the hand on the ground so twisting out to our right hand side checking our legs are straight whilst we're doing these poses Bring both hands back to the ground and walking your hands back and inhaling for flat back, then coming up, arms coming up to the sky, going into a warrior two, then twisting through to a lunge cross, controlled as you can, going into a kick by transferring your weight backwards and flicking your front leg out for the roundhouse. Returning to the cross each time, repeating the cross, transferring weight forwards 
and the kick transferring away it backwards all whilst testing your balance and your stability. Of course this has obvious relations to martial arts. So now we're going to do left knee into left cross so this time lifting off our left foot and our right foot balances for the knee transferring forwards and backwards four times and then on the fifth occasion you're just gonna straighten your left leg out and slowly pistol squat your way down straight into a triangle so lifting your hips up off the ground and then coming forward into a figure four position so just doing the same side triangle each time and lifting up in the same side figure four and if you're struggling don't worry about the triangle too much just try to focus on lifting your hips off the ground as high as you can so lifting up into our figure four shaped legs and then pushing our hips up and possibly triangling our left leg over the top of our right ankle for the full triangle so do this eight times forwards and backwards engaging the core to get the rolling between the poses okay so now back on the ground knees still bent towards you and we're gonna just use our core to rotate ourselves 360 all the way around without using our arms or legs on the ground so find whatever movement works best for your body to do this but you'll find that a lot of your core has to be engaged to get you around and it's quite relatable to a lot of jiu-jitsu movements in mixed martial arts so lifting up and standing this time kick forwards if you have enough space and want a further challenge then going backwards and forwards from a triangle and this time standing all the way up so a bit more of an action than the previous variation just do this four times and on the last one hold a standing balance with your front kick before coming back to the front of our mat and hands coming back together preparing to lift up stretching all the way up to the sky with our arms and then folding forwards relaxing here letting a bit of tension out of our lower back inhaling flat back exhaling folding forwards and jumping stepping walking our feet to a plank position and now bend your legs stepping your left foot to the outside of your feet and kicking our right leg through twisting our body under so the same this way around so basically you're stepping your foot to the the outside of one of your hands and then kicking your opposite leg through and under twisting through this exercise is called a loaded sit through so you load back then sit through a sit through is something used in wrestling and also jiu jitsu quite a lot a useful way of escaping positions but in this case a useful exercise to engage our core and move in areas that our body doesn't usually strengthen. Now our elbows tight doing our yoga press up, chaturanga to upward dog and moving back to a child's pose once you've done this. Exhaling any tension, trying to relax as much as possible, connecting to our deep breathing and setting ourselves for the next sequence on the other side. last couple of breaths and then we look to come back to an all fours position tucking our toes under and lifting our knees off the ground so now just walking our opposite hand and opposite leg off the ground as we did last time keeping ourselves as flat to the ground as possible meaning we're not twisting too much our weight one way or the other do about eight of these and then we'll go into the full twists. So twisting all the way through 
and changing our base so that we've flipped over do this eight times as well try and engage our core and be as subtle as you can with your feet and hands once you've done eight of these then come to a downward dog position once again creating that v-shape with your body then we're going to do our plank flows so flowing through plank and then going back to our downward dog letting our hips lead the backwards action once you've done four of these we'll find everyone in a downward dog position just holding this then lifting this time our left leg up off the ground for our three-legged dog and bending our left knee opening our hips out to the side and getting our hip opener before returning back to our three-legged dog and placing our left foot between our hands coming up to a warrior two facing our body to the right hand side of our mat and keeping our arms as parallel as we can to the ground hold this position nice and firmly and then lifting our arms out to the side facing both knees outwards come down to a squat and we'll repeat the side kicks we did last time so lifting our left leg off the ground first and kicking our foot out remembering to flex our foot as we kick and also chamber our leg to get our foot ready for a kick this is a tricky one for your balance so don't worry if you wobble around just play around and have fun with this once you have done this four times lift up our arms and then push our heels out to the sides for our wide-legged fold aiming to line up the backs of our palms to the backs of our heels and then inhale flat back exhale fold forwards even deeper and then right hand comes to the center a bit more forwards and twisting opening out to the left hand side holding this position breathing here trying to look up to the sky swapping the sides round left hand goes to the ground twisting up to the right if you can look up to the sky then bringing that hand back down, lining the backs of our palms to our heels. Inhale back to flat back and then arms come up to the sky into our warrior two position then twisting to our high lunge cross and then transferring our weight backwards into our left roundhouse kick, swapping forwards into our cross and just alternating from forwards cross to backwards kick looking for control rather than speed aim to do this four times and then we're going to transfer into our right knee so right foot comes off the ground and then back into our lunge cross so this time opposite leg off the ground pushing our hips forwards for the knee and trying to point our toes back as we throw the knee once you've done this go into our pistol squat back through to our triangle then push our hips forwards for a figure four so halfway get up here always the same side so the opposite side we did last time remembering to push our hips up into the air as we roll backwards and transfer forwards and backwards eight times possibly building up the speed as we get used to the action. Once you've done eight repetitions, then come to a lying back position, relaxing on the ground and preparing to do our 360 turns using our core, keeping our legs and arms off the ground as we look to find the most suitable way to get all the way around one way and then the other way so quite a weird looking exercise however really good way of activating your core and giving you a fairly useful movement at the same time 
of being able to wriggle basically. Okay, so rolling through your figure four all the way up to standing with the optional front kick. So going backwards and forwards through our triangle all the way up to standing, possibly kicking. And do this just four times. On the last one, hold your foot out and you're going to come to mountain pose. So basically feet together and just standing, possibly just catching your breath a little bit here. Then reaching your arms all the way up to the sky and folding forwards, bending and relaxing here. Then inhaling flat back, exhale, walk, step or jump to a plank position. Preparing for our loaded sit throughs. So load back, bending your knees and then step to the outside of our hands, kicking through for our sit through position. Do this eight times building up the speed when you feel more confident to do so. Last couple now before we go back to a plank position. So just returning back to our center point, then we'll slowly descend down through our chaturanga to upward dog or a yoga push up and then push back to child pose resting here getting ready for the next sequence take some long deep breaths whilst you're here So now, slowly coming out of your child's pose, come into a tabletop position, then tucking your toes under, and once again, lifting opposite hand and opposite foot off the ground, increasing the speed a little bit more now. Do this eight times, then do eight flip overs as well, just engaging the core once again, twisting through. Now we're used to the action, we can add a bit more flow to this movement but make sure that you control it at the same time. Once you've finished, come to a downward dog position, preparing to flow through our planks. So coming forwards to our plank and then pushing back through to our downward dog. Do this four times, then return back to a downward dog position. Once you've finished, And lifting up our right leg, opening our hips out to the side whilst bending our knee. Then returning to our straight three-legged dog, placing our right foot between our hands to our warrior two. Then our five-star position with our arms up in the air, squatting down and then performing our four side kicks both directions with control once again. So... Not looking to blast through these, but instead just add a flowing motion and controlling each and every action. Return to our squat, then lift up and push our heels out to the side for a wide-legged forward fold, remembering to line the heels of our palms to the heels of our feet. Inhale flat back, exhale, fold even deeper into the pose, really feeling the hamstring stretching. Then twist out to the side, placing our right hand in the center, lifting a left arm to the sky before swapping to the other side, just really engaging through our twists and remembering to breathe whilst we're here. Now bring our palms back to the floor, inhale, flat back, then come all the way up to standing position and into our warrior two before flowing straight into our cross and kicks. So crossing into a low lunge position, then kicking and transferring our weight backwards. Do this four times 
and then we'll transition straight into our left knees and crosses once we have done this. So now into our knees and crosses, remembering to point the toes as we throw the knee. This is just good practice for maybe when we throw our knee in mixed martial arts, shaping the top of our knee better and making sure our toes don't catch our opponent. So do this four times and then extend your leg out on the last one, rolling back straight into our triangle and then figure four sit-ups. So sitting up and triangling, pushing our hips up into the sky, doing this eight times and really getting that fluidity into the movement and adding breath to movement whilst we do this if possible. Last couple before we come back to our backs and prepare to do our 360 rotation without using our arms or legs. So a great test of the core. Get as creative as you like to get round. But I find the easiest way is to really guide my hips through and let my upper body follow afterwards. Whatever technique works best for you, you're engaging your core and it's a bit of fun really to perform. Okay, so now doing our triangles once again, but this time standing up and maybe kicking as well. So transitioning all the way through, using the momentum of the roll to stand you right up and transition through just four times before coming to a standing position on the last one, controlling the foot gently to the ground and doing our sun salutations so inhale to lift our hands up to the sky then exhale fold forwards really releasing out any tension in our hamstrings and lower back inhale flat back exhale walk step or jump to a plank position and we're going to do our loaded sit throughs eight times so load back step through and sit our hips through kicking our leg forwards. Once again, adding more fluidity into the movement and more speed as well. Once we finish this, come to a plank position and then we're gonna do our yoga push up to our upward dog, then pushing back into our child's pose, resting here before we do our final set on the other side. Last few deep breaths, being present of the moment you're in. Then coming up to all fours and once again tucking our toes, lifting our knees off the ground and lifting opposite hand and foot off the ground eight times. When performing this, try to keep your body level to the ground, as I said earlier, and then performing our flipping through all the way to reverse tabletop position. Really feeling the core work for our final set here. Once we have done eight of these, we'll come to our downward dog and then flow through our planks. So coming forwards, then exhaling on the backwards motion, inhaling forwards to our plank. Doing this four times, forwards and backwards, flowing through our spine. Then on the last one, come to our downward dog, lifting up our left leg this time to our three-legged dog, opening our hips up to the side, bending the knee, then placing our left foot between our hands, coming to our warrior two position, so flat to the side, then our five star lifting our hands up to the sky, coming into a squat and doing our side kicks, so chambering our knee in, then kicking out, 
and swapping sides, transferring away side to side, maybe even looking over our shoulder to turn towards the kick slightly, flexing our foot back so the heel would be connecting to the opponent. Return to the yoga squat, then straighten the legs, kicking the heels out to the side and then folding forwards. Inhaling, flat back, exhale, fold even deeper, then place our right hand in the centre, twisting out to our left hand side, possibly looking up to the sky, then swap the twist out to the other side, placing the left hand on the ground, then right arm comes up to the sky, trying to keep our hips as level as possible whilst we're here. Then place both hands back onto the ground, pushing our hands back so they're in line with our heels. Then inhaling flat back and all the way up to the top. Exhale into our warrior two position. Then twist into our lunge with our cross, transferring our weight back for our kicks. And then transferring our weight back into our cross four times. Once again, the key word being control. Flow straight into the crosses and right knees, pointing the toes for the knees once again, and landing with the cross on the ball of the foot for our high lunge. Once we've done this four times, we're going to straighten our right leg and slowly pistol squat all the way down then catch our triangle and come to our figure four sit ups pushing our hips forwards and then pushing our hips upwards for the triangle do this eight times as we've done previously and this is our last time through this so really feel the fluidity of the movement now that you feel much more accustomed to it this far into our practice After we've finished our final one, come to the ground and then we're going to do our final 360 turn around on our mats, getting as creative as we like to get around, just using our core to wriggle ourselves around the mat, having as much fun, remember just to smile, don't take this too seriously, and then coming and standing up through to our kick and triangles just four times using the momentum of the roll using our core to get us up maybe adding a bit more speed to this now you're used to it on the final one keep the leg extended out for just a bit longer then place your feet back together and doing our final sun salutation lifting the arms up on inhale exhale forward fold Inhale, flat back, then exhale, walk, step or jump to plank position and we'll do our loaded sit-throughs eight times. So just stepping past and sitting our hips through as so. Do this at a speed that's comfortable for you. The most important thing is the quality of the reps, not the number of reps you do. Return to a plank position and then we'll do our chaturanga or yoga push up to upward dog, pushing back to our child's pose, resting here, feeling how our body feels after the movements we just performed, letting our mind just rest here, breathing deeply, recovering and getting ready for our cool down sequence. slowly lifting up and then we're going to tuck our toes under maybe use the hands just to make sure all the toes are tucked under and then going to roll the wrists out by grabbing our hand and just 
rolling one way, then the other way, just loosening them up, then extend the hands out up to the sky, bit of a shoulder stretch, releasing the grip, and then doing the more unusual side or the opposite grip. Once again, lifting up to the sky, holding it here before releasing the grip and shaking out your wrists. Now we're going to do a version of camel pose. I'm going to keep my toes tucked under, but if you are more flexible, you can always untuck the toes. Now, supporting your lower back, you're going to arch back and then grab your right foot and extend your left hand up to the sky. Hold this for a bit and then return, untucking the toes and just letting yourself release here. Roll out the shoulders maybe, using this time to actively recover before coming to the other side. Once again, if you are quite flexible with your lower back, you can do this without your toes tucked. So once again, coming up, supporting the lower back, bend backwards, and this time our left hand's going to reach to grab the foot, and our right arm's going to reach up to the sky. And it's a bit of a twist as well as a back stretch here. In a controlled manner, come out of this and come to our tabletop position. And we'll do a couple more exercises to relieve our wrists. So pushing to the fronts of our fingers, lifting the palms off the ground. And this could be quite strenuous in some ways, but it's a great way of strengthening our fingers as well as our wrists. Then flipping our hands to the ground so our palms are facing towards us and maybe gently rocking side to side. Once again, just releasing any tension that there might be in the wrists, shaking them out and doing our cat and cows. So inhaling on our cows and exhaling on our cats. So inhale, looking up, exhaling, rounding the spine, then come to flat back into a downward dog. And we're gonna lift up our right leg and come to a lizard pose or a runner's lunge. So have your right foot step to the outside of both hands and then drop your left knee to the ground. And if you feel flexible enough or if it's comfortable to do so, then bring your elbows to the ground for maybe even a deeper stretch. Just feeling into the hips here and breathing deeply just to let any tension go that you are unnecessarily holding on to. Gradually you come out of this pose and you're going to prepare for a pigeon pose. So looking to line the shin up to the front of the mat flexing that right foot. First look to just stay up and then gradually fold forwards once this feels comfortable. You should feel this a lot in the hips, the glutes and maybe a relief in the sciatic whilst doing this. It's one of my favorite poses to do especially as a restorative pose. Remember to connect to your breathing, long deep breaths. And then if you want a further challenge, we're gonna slide or thread the needle with our left arm threading underneath. And this will add a bit of a shoulder opener as well as a twist. And with the right hand, you can clasp onto your foot if this is reachable, just staying here and just adding further stretches. If this isn't a comfortable position for you, just stay in the pigeon pose. Let go of the clasp on the foot if you've got it, then coming back to a downward dog position and doing the same on the other side. So lifting our left leg off the ground for three-legged dog, stepping the left foot to the outside of both hands into our runner's lunge or lizard pose. Then if this feels comfortable, 
come to our elbows, just letting ourselves relax into this position, letting gravity get us deeper into this pose. Let these last moments in this pose be present and we'll transition gradually and slowly into our pigeon pose, lining up our left shin to the front of our mat and inhaling and exhaling to fold into this pigeon pose, remembering to flex our left foot to protect our left knee. Okay, so if we did it on the other side, then we're going to thread the needle by placing our right arm through and our shoulder onto the ground, maybe clasping our foot with our left hand if we can reach this. Once again, feel free to just stay in the pigeon pose if this serves you better. Unwinding if you took the twist, pushing up back into our downward dog, just feeling out the position, maybe adding any movements that feel necessary or just staying in the stillness of downward dog. So come forward into a plank and slowly roll down to your front. And we're going to inhale and exhale, doing our sphinx roll-ups as we did earlier. Just do this four times. And on the last one, we're going to just hold it a bit longer, feeling into our back and seeing maybe the difference between the start and the end of the practice. Now we're going to roll to our back, so just rolling over preparing for a bridge pose so ensure our feet are arms distance away from us and then we're going to roll from the lower spine all the way up and just moving through this bridge pose in mixed martial arts especially the jiu jitsu side of it this is an essential movement so just practicing using this whilst also getting a nice stretch for the yoga aspect of it as well. Then on the last time, you're gonna just hold the bridge for a bit longer, maybe grabbing our basket clasp underneath, rolling our shoulders for a slightly deeper back bend, breathing deeply here, maybe even closing our eyes to feel the sensations within the body. Slowly unclasp the hands and roll your spine down grabbing both knees towards you and maybe making circles with the knees both directions just to massage out our lower spine. Now bring our right knee towards our chest and extend our left leg out to the ground. If this is a bit too much then you can always keep your left knee bent and left foot on the ground. Otherwise hold this position and then cross your right knee over the top for our twist, extending our right arm out to the side, and maybe once again closing our eyes to really be present in this stretch.
last couple of deep breaths before we unwind out of this twist, bringing both our knees back to our chest. And we could do our circles with our knees once again to massage out the lower spine and just loosen up before we end this practice. This time we're going to bring our left knee to our chest, maybe even bringing it more to our left armpit for a deeper stretch. Remembering we can always bend the right knee if this feels uncomfortable. So now we're going to cross our left leg over the top and extend our left arm out to the side into our twist position. This will be our final pose before we come to Shavasana or corpse pose. I highly suggest you do this. It's a great way of feeling your practice as well as practicing presence putting yourself in a good frame of mind for whatever happens after this practice. Last few deep breaths in this twist. And then slowly unraveling out this position, maybe bringing both your knees and hugging them towards you so that your nose is touching your knees possibly from here before we extend out into our Shavasana, into our corpse pose. I hope you enjoyed this practice. Let me know your feedback and what you want in the future. Otherwise, I hope you have a great day. And thank you for joining me. Namaste.